there is this meme that Haskell is better than Scala, or that Scala is just gateway drug to Haskell, and a long time ago I used to believe this as well. After years of using both in multiple companies and meeting people who, so to say, went back to Scala, it's kind of sad to see people bring up these stereotypes repeatedly. Sure, the Haskell language influenced and inspired Scala, but there are so many things that I miss from Scala when I use Haskell, as well as vice versa. Just want to make it clear that everything is nuanced. And when talking about Scala or Haskell here, it's not just about the languages themselves, but also about standard libraries and overall ecosystem. We'll be talking from subjective production backend experience, from somebody dealing with web apps, microservices, shuffling JSONs, and all that stuff. And the emphasis is on the production setting, not academic, theoretical, or blog post. For example, Scala is built on top of Java and has nulls, which could be scary. While in the day-to-day -day code, I rarely encounter it. The last time I saw an L point reception was more than 8 months ago, not even in the Scala code. It was in the HTTP response body. The vendor API returned internal errors in case of malformed input. They obviously use Spring. So with this in mind, one of the biggest things that separates Scala from Haskell is the ability to choose a level of functional programming or level of purity. I know how to use trace and friends to debug in Haskell, but it's pretty convenient to sneak in an occasional println anywhere I want. And I'm happy to admit that I used a couple of mutable variables a few months ago, and it was great. I was migrating some convoluted functionality from legacy Ruby to Scala, and it was simpler to translate the core almost as is in a non-functional, non-pure way. Add some tests, remove unnecessary code, fix some edge cases, and only after rewriting a functional style with a little state mona. Sure, it won't be the end of the world to rewrite that in Haskell as well. Instead of intermediate representation, I would have planned on paper or something like that, but it's not the point. This FP dial is also great for learning, teaching, occasional straightforward performance tweaks, and so on. Another big difference is laziness. When writing Haskell, laziness allows us not to think or worry about stuff like stack safety. For example, we don't have to worry about the difference between using applicative or monad operator. We can also look at the code of any monad and it's going to be just two function, no tail recam functions or other tricks. It still doesn't mean that it's going to be easy to read or understand, but that's not the point. And laziness gives more room for the compiler to be free and optimize whatever it wants. On the other hand, when writing Scala, it's pretty nice not to worry about laziness, like what I mentioned before. I can print a LAN or see in the debugger pretty much any variable and know that I will see it, and it will be evaluated. On top of that, no worrying about accumulating the tanks, which is pretty nice. Probably the biggest stylistic thing I miss from Haskell is function composition, starting with a concise composition operator, which is just a dot. In this simple example, we extract error message, wrap it in the left, and then lift it using pure. Sure, it requires getting used to, some people abuse it and so on, but function composition can be so elegant. In this other example, imagine we have some optional raw string and we map it using composition of functions. First we trim and then we wrap it in the user ID. What also helps Haskell's elegance is currying. Haskell functions are curried, which makes function composition and reuse even more seamless. Imagine we have a function called enrich user info, which takes payment info and a user and returns IO of user info and extract user that takes some entry and returns a user. If we have a list of entities, we can traverse, apply a couple of functions using the function composition. First, we extract the user and then enrich the user info and note how nicely we pass payment info and then compose all of it together into one function. There's no need to introduce intermediate variables or anything like that. At the same time, not having current by default is to Scala's advantage. It can notably improve error messages, which is also more beginner friendly. When you miss an argument, the compiler tells you if you passed a wrong number of parameters or which exact parameter is wrong. If we only pass a user to enrich user info, the compiler is going to tell us that we passed a user, but it expected a payment info. And if we only pass a payment info, it's going to say that we are missing argument for parameter user, which is quite helpful in both cases. Another style or formatting related thing that I really miss in Scala is having the ability to write things in the WHERE clauses. It's not the same as declaring variables before using them, and it's not the same as using private or nested functions. I like to have primary logic first and secondary after or below, and be explicit that functions are not used anywhere else, and WHERE clause gives us both. Let's talk types, starting with new types and some types. It feels like Haskell encourages us to make custom types because of how uncluttered it is. If I want to introduce a new some type or an enum, I just say role is either user or admin and derive whatever I need. If I want a quick new type, I say quota is a new type over int. I can even derive 
num instance and be able to add one quarter to another one, or for example, calculate remaining quarter by taking balance quarter and subtracting the cost. It's just so neat and ergonomic. When I'm writing Scala, I might think about making a custom type, but then give up and keep using strings and booleans. Sure, one can use a library. Sure, it's better with Scala 3, but still. Finally enough, Scala is way better at the opposite, at product types. By this I mean records and case classes. We don't need to go into more details. If you have used Haskell, you know. And once again, sure, one can use lenses. Sure, it's better with latest extensions, but still. On a related note, Scala 3 introduced union types. Like in this case, we have not found or missing scope or database is dead. It's still part of the either. Technically, it could be custom ID or not found or not missing scope or database is dead, but it's not the point. The point is that finally introducing new error types doesn't feel like a chore. There is no need to build hierarchies or convert between different ones or exceptions or throwables or whatever. The point is, I missed those in Haskell and in Scala 2. Let's keep it short. Haskell has great type inference. It works when you need it. I never feel like I have to help the compiler to do its job. I'm not talking about complicated type level stuff, just normal FP code. For example, we can compose monet transformers without annotating a single one or even the last one. In this example, we're using XFT, which is just either T. We can lift something that returns IO of either, for example, fetch user into XFT using XFT. We can lift something that returns IO, like find subscription, into either T using lift IO. And we can lift stuff using pure. In all of it works, there is no annotation somewhere in between in the code. And the best part, when something went wrong, the compiler has our back. Say we forgot to put XFT in front of fetch. The compiler is going to tell us what's the error. And if we use a hole, which is another nice Haskell feature, the compiler is going to tell us that it found a hole from IO of either to accept t and it's even telling us look accept t is gonna fit it maybe use this and now it's gonna be a great transition between topics on the other side of the coin scala has a great module system we can design composable programs don't worry about things like naming conflicts and also look what we can do we can do dot completion to be fair the dot completion is good and all and occasionally i, I miss it in haskell yeah it's however only useful when i already have a specific object or already know where to look when we just start using a library, have a generic problem, or don't even know what library to use, then the dot completion is not gonna help us. But Haskell Hoogle is. We can search for generic things. For example, I'm looking for a function that takes a predicate from A to Boolean, takes a list and returns a list, and it's gonna tell me some candidates. We can be more specific. Imagine you found except T in the code and you never saw it before, or somebody said it in the blog post, or whatever. We can ask Hoogle. I have an XFT, how can I use it? Or be more specific, I have IO of either and I need XFT, what do I do? And on and on. If we step back and look at the bigger picture, Scala has a better library situation. When I need to pick a library to solve something, it's usually easier to do in Scala. Once again, keep in mind the context. I know, for instance, that Scala has nothing that comes close to Haskell's parser libraries, but this is not what we're talking about right now. It's most notable in companies where many other teams use different stacks. Because we, as Haskell Scala developers, have to keep up with them. New serialization formats, new monitoring systems, new AWS services, and so on. We rarely have to start from scratch in Scala, because at least we can access the sea of Java libraries. The opposite issue, when there are too many libraries for the same use cases, is just a bit less common in Scala. Mostly when there are multiple libraries, it's because each exists for a different Scala flavor. We'll talk about this soon. But it's often fine because it's easy to pick one based on your style. Maybe not as easy for beginners. And then Scala libraries themselves are usually more production ready and polished. Essentially, there are more Scala developers and more Scala in production, so the libraries go through more iterations and testing. However, when it comes to picking versions of the libraries, I prefer Haskell because it has stackage a community project which maintains sets or snapshots of compatible Haskell libraries. We don't need to brute force which library versions are compatible or go through a bunch of GitHub readmes or release notes. The tools can pick up the version for us, either explicitly, if we choose a specific resolver or snapshot, for example, LTS 22.25, or implicitly by using loose version bounds, for example, bases between 4.7 and 5, and relying on the fact that Stackage incentivizes libraries to stay up to date and be compatible with others, or something like that. Let's talk best practices. As I mentioned, there are various flavors of Scala. Some say different stacks. Java-like Scala, Python-like Scala, Actor-based Scala, many other Scalas, and the most interesting and relevant for us right now, two functional programming Scalas. 
type level or gets based and zeo based. Most of the time they come with their core set of libraries and best practices. It's easy to get onboarded at a new code base or a company. No need to buy shed every time about basic things like resource management or error handling. Of course, there are hype cycles and new whistles every few years, but Scala communities usually settle on a few things and move on. On the other hand, there is no consensus around Haskell, like whatsoever, on any topic. And I'm going to contradict what I've just said, but I like it too. It can be really fun and rewarding as well. So I have seen four production usages of Haskell. For example, each company used a different effect system or ways to structure programs. Actually, half of them used even multiple different ones inside the same company, but it was enjoyable to learn, experiment, and compare. In a nutshell, all those Scala or Haskell effect systems are just monads with different boilerplate. If you used one, you used them all. It's not that big of a deal to switch between them. And it's another great thing about Haskell, the use or reuse of abstractions and type classes. It's typical for libraries to provide instances for common type classes. For example, if there is something to combine, there are probably semigroup and or monoid instances. So when Haskell developers pick up a new library, they already have some intuition on how to use it, even without much documentation. Well, maybe not as easy for beginners. Take, for instance, the megaparsec parser library. Most of the combinators are based on type classes. For example, we can use applicatives, pure, to make a parser that succeeds without consuming input, alternative operators that implements choice, and so on. Let's do this round. Let's quickly cover a few other topics. We won't give them too much time because they are even more nuanced or niched. Or I was too lazy to come up with good examples. Speaking a bit about documentation. Originally, when I sketched out this guide, I was going to say that Scala is better at teaching, documentation, books, courses, and whatever. But after sleeping on it more than a couple of nights, I don't think it's the case. I don't think one is doing strictly better than the other on this front as of 2024. Probably the first and the most common topic people bring up when comparing Scala to Haskell is type classes. In Haskell, there is guaranteed to be one instance of a type class per type, while Scala allows multiple implicit instances of a type. In Haskell, there are a lot of good properties as a consequence, but honestly, the best one for me is that there is no need to remember what to import to get instances. If you like it when your language allows you to do a lot of type level programming, it's an extra point for Haskell, and if you don't like it when your colleagues spend too much time playing on the type level or don't like complex error messages, it's an extra point for Scala. Scala compiles faster. I think in theory, Haskell has a strong position here, green threads, STM, and other great concurrency primitives. However, in practice, I prefer writing concurrent code in Scala. Maybe it's because I'm scared of Haskell's interruptions and async exceptions. Maybe it's because occasionally I can just replace a map with pragmatic par map, map async, or even part traverse and call it a day. Or maybe because the Scala library authors, among other things, built on top of Haskell's findings. So is there a lesson here? On one hand, I wish people would stop dumping on other languages and recite the same things because it doesn't feel productive to me. On the other hand, I, for instance, hate Ruby so much that if someone told me to learn something from Ruby, I'd tell them to. 